I want to just recap, hopefully it's a recap, um, what's called the central dogma of biology. And for those of you that know what the central dogma of biology is, you can switch off and check Facebook, uh, skip this section, go do something else. But I figured that there's enough people that are interested in this that don't yet know really what the central dogma of biology is and what that means and how that means, what that means for some of the things that we're trying to accomplish in the class. So the central dogma of biology is very simple. It's basically that DNA is the genetic code, okay? And DNA is converted through a process called transcription to what's called messenger RNA. In addition to messenger RNA, there's two other types of RNA. There's one called uh, tRNA, transfer RNA, and one called rRNA, ribosomal RNA. And you saw those um, appear earlier. And we'll talk more about exactly what they, those are in upcoming classes. Messenger RNA, in particular, is converted to proteins. And proteins are the things that do the work, okay? Proteins are comprised of amino acids. And in messenger RNA, three letters constitute what's called a codon and they encode for one amino acid. And messenger RNA is read sequentially three letters at a time to give you the different amino acids that make up the protein. And it's sequential, non-overlapping reading of the sequence. There's also a step here which we don't talk about because it defies all rules of biology and only very cool viruses do it, um, but you can go back this way if you really want to. But you, you don't normally do that. We don't normally do that. Bacteria don't normally do that. Viruses do that. The code to go from mRNA to amino acids, proteins, is standard. Basically, everything, every life form we know uses essentially the same code. That's not true. There are about um, a dozen or so codes that different organisms use, but it's essentially uh, the standard code. As shown in this table here, you can take three letters, and what's shown in the table are RNA letters, and recall that DNA has an alphabet of A, C, G, and T. RNA is very similar. Its alphabet is A, C, G, and it uses U instead of T. And so in this table, where it says, for example, U, 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 in the top left entry, that's the DNA equivalent of that would be T, T, T. And in fact, um, the DNA gets trans transcribed into the RNA in a sequence-dependent fashion. So what happens is we have a DNA sequence. Let's say we have a sequence like this. So this is one strand of our DNA. And recall that DNA has a direction. So this will be the 5 prime end, and this will be the 3 prime end. And we can have the other strand of DNA going back the other way with complementary bases. So every time there's a C, there's a G. Every time there's a T, there's an A. Every time there's an A, there's a T, and so on. Okay? And so we can 
Once we have one strand, we can always calculate the other. This is called the reverse complement because the top strand goes from left to right and the bottom strand goes from right to left. And so our DNA would look something like this, let's say. And here's the other piece. Whoa, that's cool. Okay. So when transcription occurs, what happens is this opens, and so let me just write my sequence again. So here's my top strand. And then it opens, and so here's my bottom strand. And now I get RNA made, and RNA is made using what's called the template strand right here. So the RNA here, when there's a T, it puts an A. When there's an A, it puts a U. When there's a C, it puts a G. When there's a T, it puts an A. When there's an A, it puts a U. When there's a G, it puts a C, and, and so on, okay? So what we have here, now you can actually see it. What we have here is called the coding strand. And what we have here is called the template strand. Because the RNA is basically the same as the coding strand, but actually is read from the template strand. And this is one of those things that always confuses the hell out of everybody, right? So it's read from the template strand, and it matches the coding strand. And when we talk about the sequence of a gene, we talk about the temp we talk about the coding strand sequence, not the template strand, because that makes it just easier for us to say, okay, we've got an ATG in RNA that becomes an AUG, and in protein that becomes a methionine. So our RNA then looks like this. This is our M RNA it can keep going. And then we read our mRNA in batches of three. So AUG, if we look in our table, A in the first position, U in the second position, G in the third position is methionine. AUC, A in the first position, U in the second position, C in the third position is isoleucine. UCG, U in the first position, C in the second position, G in the third position becomes serine. And UAA, which is U in the first position, A in the second position, and A in the third position is a stop codon. And so if this were our sequence and this were really happening, we would have a very short, what we call, in this case, we call it a polypeptide, but you could also call it a protein. This particular protein only has three amino acids and the stop, okay? So this is how we go from DNA to RNA to protein from DNA, we have our coding strand, our template strand, we get our mRNA, we get our protein sequence out of the bottom.